people are starting to come in. Hey everyone, just want to welcome you all to today's NSF webinar series. Uh, uh, today's webinar is presented by Track Software. Um, we're just going to be waiting a couple more minutes as people start to filter in here. For those of you who have already joined us, again, just want to welcome you. And we'll get started here in a couple of minutes. We got a couple more people filtering it in here. Thank you everyone for joining. We're just uh, giving a couple more minutes here. We'll start in about um, a minute or so. Thank you. All right, everybody, we're about at that time. I just want to uh, welcome you all. My name is Tyler Santos, and I'm a business development specialist here at the National Sports Forum. Uh, I want to welcome you all to today's webinar, How Iltich Sport and Entertainment Sponsorships Fly Higher with Digital Partnership Management. Our moderator, Charles Reynolds, the CRO for Track Software, will be leading a discussion on how rice holders, agencies, and brand partners can do more together by digitizing their sponsorship management efforts, along with ways to drive success with sponsorships, touching on real-world examples from the NHL. Joining him will be Zach Carter, the Director of Corporate Partnership Activation from the Detroit Red Wings. Charles has been a part of the Forum family for quite some time. He was an NSF Case Cup captain back in 2010, competing with the University of Memphis, and he has attended the NSF four times. For the past seven years, he has led marketing and sales at Track Software, a two-time NSF Tech Tank winner. He and his team create different experiences with rights holders and others across major and minor leagues in ticketing and sponsorship through their digital sponsorship management platform. He is also the NBA record breaker and ticketing and sponsorship leader across the big five sports on the rights holder side. Now, before I hand it over to Charles, I just want to let everyone know that if you like the content you hear today, you can join the Forum family live at the 2023 National Sports Forum Conference, February 26th through the 28th in Los Angeles, California. Our hosts include LAFC, SoFi Stadium, Hollywood Park, and YouTube Theater. Get your badges now before prices go up after January 15th. You can visit our website, www.sports-forum.com, for more information. I'm looking forward to today's webinar, and I know there's a lot of great discussion waiting to be had. So with that said, I'll give the floor over to Charles to get this webinar started. Charles? Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it, everyone. Charles or Chip Reynolds from, from TRAC. Uh, greeting you from uh, the snowy slopes of Utah and excited to welcome my friend uh, Zach Carter uh, from greater Detroit area, uh, my hometown area where I spent a, a lot of time playing sports and certainly uh, collegiately as well. Um, Zach will attest I'm a pretty diehard Wolverines fan. Um, Zach is uh, a Tennessee volunteer himself, so he is a, a little bit... Um, separated himself from the the Big Ten banter that we like to throw around when we're doing these virtual calls together, but this should be a lot of fun. So Zach, thanks so much for joining, representing Illich Sports and Entertainment and the Red Wings and Tigers and everything else. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Absolutely. So guys, um, kicking this off, we're excited about 
certainly the forum for this coming year in LA. Um, certainly had a lot of fun in, in the past, in past forums, Austin, Texas, Vegas, Baltimore, a few of the ones I've attended um, going back when. But we're here to talk about flying higher with digital sponsorship management. And with that said, um, Melody, I'd like to send a poll out to the group in terms of your familiarity, famil familiarity with digital sponsorship management. And what I mean by that is, you know, kind of departing from status quo of um, sponsorship management, which typically is a bevy of spreadsheets, you know, uh, threaded emails, maybe a messy shared drive, um, calls that don't connect. So a lot of disparate systems, um, which is generally the way that, that folks manage their partnerships. So um, Zach and I will be kind of referencing this on and off kind of throughout today, I think. Um, and just know, you know, if that's your world, you're not alone. That's been the norm for all of us for many years. But I'm here to talk about kind of, you know, what we've done at track over the last seven years of existence and kind of leading the fray in terms of digital partnership management. And um, Zach's, um, you know, thoughts into this are going to be key. And we're here, guys, to be vulnerable ourselves, right? I think best learning experiences are, you know, coming from a point of, of vulnerability where we learned a lot of lessons and we have um, can help you guys kind of better apply what we've learned along the way. So um, with that said, um, Zach, why don't you tell me a little bit about or tell the audience a bit about kind of your track record with, uh, with the wings and the group and um, what's got you, you know, into a position that you are right now and kind of what your day-to-day -day looks like a little bit. Yeah, so... Um, I've been with the Wings two different times. Uh, I started out on the ticket services side and I was here for three years. Um, I then moved on to um, a leadership position as a manager of the season ticket services department with the Colorado Avalanche. So I switched uh, from one side to the other. Um, I was out there for two years and knew that I wanted to work in sponsorship activation. Um, so I came back in uh, 2016 and I've been back since, had an opportunity to um, work on some major partnerships um, overseeing moving from the Joe into our new current home, Little Caesars Arena. Um, got some great experience and, uh, and managed a book of about 20 partners, um, including our landmark partner or our naming rights partner. Um, and then uh, about two years ago, I was elevated and uh, I now oversee a team of eight um, on the sponsorship activation side here with the Red Wings. Um, and uh, I'm loving it. It's It's been a great experience so far. Really enjoy it. Absolutely. And for those of us sports fans at home, you know, Red Wings, certainly resurgent team here featuring stars like Cider, Larkin, Bertuzzi, you know, you name it. But what you might not know, or maybe you do, is that the, the Illich group, Tigers, Red Wings, and everything that they represent is a very star-studded group on the sponsorship activation side. So like to highlight names like Molly Wardak Fult, Sarah Schwartz, Mike Holly, um, Zach's cohort managing the Tigers, Tiffany Harrington, who just won a SBGA 30 under 30 award for those of us kind of industry nerds out there. Um, but Zach, it's not all rainbows and unicorns, right? Um, there's a lot of growing pains involved when you're restructuring, combining teams together, doing things like that. Take us into the world of kind of being a part of it when it was Red Wings alone um, and, and, you know, since the merger with the Tigers and everything else. Yeah, um, it, it is. Uh, there are several growing pains. Um, you know, when we were, uh, we were separate, we really operated as separate teams completely. Um, even though we were owned by the same owner, the Red Wings operated their business, the Tigers operated their business. And to be completely honest, I didn't really know anybody over at the Tigers. Um, we merged about uh, four years ago now. Um, and I think the biggest growing pain was just, um, you know, trying to figure out the processes. Uh, because we operated as two separate organizations, we had processes on the Red Wings side that were completely different from um, processes on the Tigers side. And um, working through that, to, um, to find the best process uh, for us as a group to move forward um, 
was was key and um and a lot of times that meant pulling pieces from the red wings process and pulling pieces for the tigers process to to come up with the ultimate the optimal process and um i think that that was just that was the biggest learning curve is just trying to get your feet under you when you when you merge like that um but it's it's been obviously for the better it only makes sense that um when you've got two teams um it really gives us an opportunity to um, have our partners. We've got about 40% of our partners that are cross property partners, meaning it at both the Red Wings and Tigers. And it really gives us an opportunity to activate those partnerships 365 days a year. Um, so it is, it's been a, a blessing. Um, we've, we've been really excited and we finally, um, we finally had the opportunity to kind of see the, the reap the rewards from, from what was uh, a challenging process that first year. No doubt. So Zach, Take us into that world a little bit. Um, and again, the more vulnerable we are, I think the better for the audience. But, you know, relatively speaking, I know baseball tends to be a little bit more old fashioned in terms of their systems go, you know, other leagues and hockey, maybe similarly. But what was the gap kind of between Red Wings and Tigers? Tell us about like the tech stacks involved and, you know, kind of some of that learning process of like, trying to get people all on the same page, you know, get buy-in for trying new systems and, you know, some, some of that world. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, it, there were a multitude of, of hurdles that we had to overcome, um, you know, from, from a sponsorship side, the sales team, I said, 40% of our accounts are cross property. If you're a sales manager, like which one of you gets to keep that account, right? Um, one of those cross property accounts, which one of you gets to keep that account? Um, obviously processes accounting um, on the back end. accounting has a, a different process over, had a different process over at the ballpark than they may have um, at the arena. Um, you know, some other processes like on, on the social side, we're able to do some social, um, some social media on the, the Red Wings side that we don't incur fees from, from BAM on like they do on the tiger side. So um, just working through all of that, figuring out what we can do, um, you know, what the process is for getting alumni for events or what the process is for getting an active player for an event. Um, just working through that. And a lot of it was just unknown, you know, we hadn't, hadn't had to deal with it before. So it, it, it forced us to, to confront it head on, um, find the best solution and, and move forward with it. That's great. And as far as structure goes, Zach, today, give the group an idea of how you guys kind of delegate, divide, conquer, report. How does that structure work? How is sales kind of incorporated? You know? Yeah, so it's it's pretty complex. Obviously, we've talked about the Red Wings and Tigers. In addition to the baseball and hockey teams, we've also got an entertainment arm of our business um, called 313 Presents. So 313 Presents handles all concerts at Little Caesars Arena. Uh, Comerica Park, the Fox Theater downtown, and then three amphitheaters. Um, so the way that our, our department is, is structured is the sales managers sell all of that. Um, they're a one-stop shop. They sell um, for all of basically any event that we've got, they can sell. Um, we also have a solutions team that kind of sits in the middle of, of sales and activation. And, and their role is really to help um, just the they're kind of the middleman. They help us um, with a multitude of, of tasks, but they really help brainstorm and ideate new creative concepts that we can bring to partners um, based on, on the KPIs that the partners give us when we're prospecting. Um, and then we've got the activation side. The activation side is a little bit different. Uh, we are siloed. Um, we've got a Red Wings team, a Tigers team, and a 313 Presents team. And um, that's really, honestly, just for sanity. Um, when the tiger season is wrapping up and you're working on recaps as an activation manager, um, we're also at the same time uh, kicking off the Red Wings season and trying to get that off the ground. And so um, while I say we're siloed, we really do work collaborative, collaboratively together. Um, we are, like I said, 40% of our partners across property. And so the activation managers on each of those accounts will continue um, to stay in touch um, daily uh, we're all based out of the same office um, here at Little Caesars Arena. And then, um, you know, for instance, if a, if a, a 
activation works great for a partner that is, is shared at both properties. The activation manager on the Red Wing side might communicate to the, the Tigers activation manager and let them know how great that. On the flip side, if, if we do something at the Red Wings that kind of is a dud, um, there's no point in repeating that. And so um, just continuously um, talking, communicating, not only with our partners, but also with our, our internal staff to make sure that we're uh, providing the best enhancement opportunities for the partners is what we're, what we're doing on the activation side. Sure. And, and from that standpoint, Zach, um, what does Molly and leadership really kind of task you guys with coming back to in terms of delivering, you know, to kind of keep that level of service as a differentiator, right? Yeah, so um, we really um, have have gotten away from just checking the box, um, making sure that each asset is executed. Um, we're really focused and, and tasked with by uh, upper management, senior leadership on um, looking at it through the looking at each partnership through the eight, the uh, the lens of an agency, um, and finding ways that we can continuously enhance the partnerships, not just doing what is executed, but looking at the partnership um, continuously and seeing what's working, what's not working, why is it not working? If it's not working, can we reevaluate how we're doing it, or can we change the asset altogether? Um, the the biggest focus is not finding out um, in our year-end recap that something didn't work and the partner was not happy with it. It's finding out um, in real time so that we've got time to pivot and adjust and make sure that we're enhancing the, uh, the partnership to the best of our ability. No doubt. So Zach, uh, speaking of adjusting, um, COVID obviously tough thorn in our side is for everybody, right? We know what it all did to live entertainment and you know certainly even today, you know, we're not all out of the woods yet. Zach, take us into the world of, you know, Illich and how you guys really approached dealing with that and all the complications and kind of where we're sitting today in terms of impact that's still left over. Yeah, so um, we were very fortunate. We had um, forward thinking leadership and we were very proactive from the start. Um, even though we didn't have answers, um, we made it a point to keep our biweekly uh, calls or our, bi our our monthly calls with uh, with partners, depending on what the frequency was on those. Some of them are biweekly, some of them are weekly, and some of them are monthly. Um, we made it a point to keep those um, those calls on the books. Um, obviously, we were not in the office, and neither were our partners, so we weren't face to face. But we were um, constantly on screen, like we are today, um, just staying in communication, um, letting them know the the latest updates, being there as a source for them if they have questions. Um, and I think they really appreciated that we weren't kind of hiding from it. We didn't have the answers and we were honest with them about that when we didn't have the answers. Um, as we moved into it, we kind of started to get the feeling that we were going to see a couple of different scenarios play out. We really didn't know which one it was. So we planned, um, make good plans based on partner KPIs. Um, as we had those conversations with our partners, we realized that a lot of them, their, their KPIs were changing during the pandemic. And so it was important for us and it was valuable for us to continue to have those conversations so that we were up to speed on what they were looking to do, that their goals had shifted. Um, we saw a big shift towards community from a lot of partners. And um, as we went through the process, we didn't really know um, what the scenarios were gonna be, but we, we put together several scenarios. We put together a full season, we put together a canceled season altogether. Um, we did a 50% uh, season, we did um, a season with 100% um, fans, with 80% fans, with 10% fans. Um, and the idea was that we were trying to put together a plan that worked for each of our partners. Um, and then when the scenario did come out and it was, it was um, established that we were gonna play uh, a shortened season, um, we started out here in Michigan with no fans and then we, we went to, I'm remembering correctly, I think we were able to have 250 fans um, relatively early, but not much. Um, and so we put together um, a plan based on each individual partner's KPIs. Um, and and we, we kind of combined bits and pieces of all the different various plans that we put together for each partner. And then we were able to bring them really quickly um, a, a plan for an activation for the season. We asked them to be a partner with us. Um, we understood that um, 
that this was not um, not ideal and we were pivoting and we asked them to uh, to walk hand in hand with us on this. Um, we were able to get um, to all of our partners uh, really within like 10 days. Um, and it was it was about this time of year because the season was starting in January, the beginning of January. Um, we started, I, I want to say we started on like December 21st with our meetings. Um, and our plans really focused on on what their car, their KPIs were and that we had addressed that. And, and they, they let us know that they appreciated that. Um, everything was was built on transparency from the start and flexibility. Um, as we as we moved in to the season, um, obviously just like anywhere else, um, turnover was was a challenge. Um, and and even coming out of COVID had continued to be a challenge for a while, um, just like every other organization. And um, one thing that we recognized that we had a need for is is a, um, a system like track that would help us um, keep everything organized so that um, we weren't continuously trying to get somebody up to speed on stuff. Um, the nice thing about track and what it's really helped us do is it's helped us to um, keep everything in one place. We don't have a lot of spreadsheets. We don't have all of, um, all of the different documents and the different folders going around. Um, and, and so whether it's within our organization or if it's um, with our partner's organization, if the contact leaves, the new person from either side can jump in and they can see exactly what creative is, is running in Arena, what creative is running on the website, um, what assets are still outstanding and need to be executed, what assets are overdue. Um, it's really got everything listed in there. So it's a one-stop shop, so to speak, to get up to speed on everything. Uh, it's been great for us. Thank you, Zach, for um, for providing that segue. And again, to be vulnerable, the Red Wings were our, our first NHL client. Uh, Zach was a young, budding superstar at that time. You know, we certainly saw some some key things, you know, back when to make it happen. But ultimately, we lost a renewal in the process and we're lucky enough to pick them back up, you know, when we had evolved a little bit and gotten stronger, you know, around COVID and certainly the momentum of this digital transformation and shift in uh, sponsorship management has helped. Uh, certainly had to do a lot of educating along the way. But Zach, give the audience an idea of um, what's kind of been your formula and the formula you've seen internally. I mentioned a couple of the other superstars internally with the group, but what's been, what's helped get you from, you know, star coordinator up the chain to managing a pretty robust team that's doing so much, you know, in terms of partnership portfolio and complexity and all these contingency plans that you described through COVID to today? Yeah, you know, I, I've had great leadership um, and above me and, uh, and great, um, great boss to, to learn from. Um, Molly is, has been excellent. Um, but really, I think it's, uh, it's just being organized, being um, forward thinking, thinking proactively, um, being willing to change, willing to adjust. I think that's one of the, the great things um, the pandemic was terrible, right? But one of the great things that came out of it is um, whether it be our individual department or other departments within our organization, it caused us to have to be more flexible with partners and, um, and being willing to pivot, um, not following just exactly what the contract says. And if something's not working, being willing to adjust in it. Um, and I think that flexibility and, and the ability to pivot has really... Um, really provided us with, with a staff that, um, that is able to look out for each partner, um, multitask and, and do everything they can to enhance the partnerships. And we're bringing partners new ideas. Um, I, I tell my team every day, like, we don't want to just, uh, we don't want to just sit on our laurels as, oh, they're happy right now, because they may not be happy someday. Um, we want to continue to do everything we can, even if they're 100% happy with everything. We want to continue to do everything we can to bring them new ideas to enhance their brands with us. And so we'll bring them ideas. Sometimes uh, they say no, and that's okay. Um, we might use that idea with somebody else, or we might not use it. But our job is to continue to bring ideas to help um, grow the partnership 
um, between us and each of our partners. Absolutely. And you hit on so many key themes, right? Flexibility, transparency. Uh, we talked a lot about things like turnover, which we'll address, guys, and just polling the audience again. Um, thank you so much for responding last time. But who here has dealt with turnover? We'd love to hear more about your experience with internal and external turnover tied to your work as well and kind of see where you're coming from there. And, and of course, send us questions. Feel free to send anything our way if anything kind of pops to mind. But Zach, from your standpoint, going back to all those themes that you just talked about, how does track, how is track able to help you guys be more flexible or accountable or transparent or KPI driven or any of those kind of key principles and key learning experiences that you've kind of cultivated, you know, along the way through COVID and otherwise? Yeah, well, as far as organized, I mean, it, it not only helps the activation managers, but it helps um, our leadership team um, know exactly what's going on and have have kind of a roadmap for our one-on-one -on -one meetings with each of our activation managers to discuss the partnerships. Before track, um, it was really up to the activation manager to just fill me in on um, each asset and where it was at. Um, now I get a real-time look into it. The activation team understands that if it didn't happen in track, it hasn't happened. And so they're constantly updating their pictures, um, updating their, uh, their measurable tracking stats, um, and, and it really helps us to stay organized. I can ask then, hey, this says that it was due a week ago. Why is it not there? And, and I can look right in and see the status. I can look into it and see like either it's with us, it's with the partner waiting on the creative to come back or waiting for approval um, and so on. The other part is the transparency piece that you mentioned. Um, look, we don't want this to be uh, something that comes up at the end of the season and, and we're giving a recap and saying, well, we didn't meet this goal and this is why. Um, we are continuously uploading this, um, uploading all of the, the information so that on a monthly basis, at any time, our partners can jump in to track, um, look into the system and see how things are performing so that on those biweekly calls, we can talk about it. If we need to pivot, I'd rather pivot mid-season um, where it makes sense than, than wait until the end of the season and try and figure out like what went wrong. And so um, it gives us real time insight into that, but it also it also is very transparent to the partner. They can see exactly what's being executed, how it looks on screenshots, how it looks in the arena, um, how many website impressions they're getting, social metrics. All of that stuff is, is able to be um, uploaded and, and viewed and tracked in real time. That's great. And so Zach, along those lines, um, we talked a little bit about kind of some manager protocols that you've done, um, but certainly, um, you know, addressing themes, you know, like transparency of data, real time, um, going to turnover here. So we just pulled the audience. It sounds like it's an issue for a lot of folks out there as well, um, inherently. So, and of course, COVID, we had people getting furloughed, you know, left and right, and skeleton staffs and everything like that. So your headcount is constantly changing. If, if your status quo, uh, you know, we've all kind of felt it. Um, take us into the world of, you know, losing personnel, losing, um, you know, potentially losing key partners and, you know, maybe how track has kind of helped with, you know, the plug and play scenario of, um, you know, those new folks that kind of fill those roles. Yeah, I think it's just efficiency. Um, it is, it's really allowed us, whether it be on, on our side or on the partner side, um, you know, we had a, a partner, um, our, our main contact, that's our day-to-day -day contact, um, went out on maternity week. How do you get somebody up to speed quickly? Um, give spreadsheets, and then there's a ton of questions back and forth about, well, can you send me all the different creative we're playing? Um, now, we give them the link to track and the password, and they can log into the account. They can see um, exactly what's playing. They can see proof of performance photos. They can see uh, the metrics. Um, there's due dates, so they can see if they've got hospitality experiences, when those are. Um, if there's new creative coming, when that creative needs to be posted. It gives them a real look um, in one place into everything rather than um, multitude of spreadsheets and different emails and documents. It, it just really 
streamlines the process. And it does so on our side as well. Um, we don't have to spend um, as much time getting somebody up to speed because they're able to go in and look at everything um, themselves um, on their time. Um, but it's, it's a more efficient way of, of just reviewing everything that's involved with each individual um, asset. And, and it's great because it pulls right from our CRM database. So the, the assets are line by line and, um, and you can update in real time, like where it's at in the process so that as a member of leadership, when I go in, I can look at it and I can see like, okay, this is running. It hasn't been marked complete yet because we're still waiting on proof performance photos or we're still waiting on metrics, but that's all that needs to be done. Everything else, it's it's up and running and it's in process. Or um, I can see why something is not in, in process. Um, so it's just, uh, it's really been valuable um, as we onboard um, and, and it will continue to be. Um, I think, you know, everybody's hope is to have consistency in staff and, uh, I'm I'm glad that um, over the last year we've we've come out of uh, out of the pandemic and we've we've rebuilt our staff and we've got um, a consistent staff right now. But it prepares you for any time that there's there's a change, um, and that's that's one of the great things about it. Oh, that's fantastic, Zach. So um, we talked about kind of filling mm -hmm. headcount and you know plug and play a little bit and training and ramp up, but. Let's talk about kind of the partner side, right? And getting those partners incorporated in the system and, you know, some of the efficiencies or feedback that you've gotten while rolling it out, you know, with our help across the portfolio. Yeah, I think one of the biggest, uh, the biggest things that that's helped us um, is it is, I haven't really talked about this yet, but it is a, a landing place for all creative that is um, turned in. So we have, um, and historically built spec guides and sent those out. And then um, the partners, as they complete creative, they send it in and they say what the schedule is to run it. Um, now we have a spec guide built in to, um, built into the track system. And when partners have creative for approval, they submit it through track. Um, we mark whether it's approved or not through track or if there needs to be changes and it lives within that system. So everything, is running through track. We're not operating in different areas. Um, it's really helped us uh, with um, streamlining a, a one-stop area for everything to live. Um, and, and the partners appreciate it because they know where to submit it. They don't have to worry about like, did it go through it? Was it too big for the email? Was the file too big? Any of that stuff, it, it lives within track and they can see in real time, like whether it's approved, whether it hasn't been approved, if it hasn't been approved, what's the issue? Um, so that we can continuously, um, continuously be efficient with with trying to get those uh, those different creative pieces because a lot of partners have several creative pieces. Um, we can get those up and running as as fast as possible. That's fantastic. So a lot of that is ramp up to the season and assets that are ongoing. You know, at Little Caesars Arena. Um, but let's talk about what the standard is there in terms of kind of delivery of results. Um, we can get into some recap stuff. I know Zach's got a, a deck that we have, you know, plans to show you guys in terms of kind of talking through that. But talk about now. So Tiger season is over. Tiffany and crew are hard at work kind of getting those deals renewed and having those conversations. But, you know, as soon as we're kind of transitioning outside of stuff that's thick and, you know, the thick of things, I guess, in season to more of the, you know, off season. We know there's no off season, right? Um, take us into that dynamic a little bit. Yeah, I think I think the biggest change for us is um, traditionally the way that we had operated with recaps. Recaps are, um, I'm pretty sure every activation manager's uh, least favorite thing to do just because of the amount of time that they take to build out. Um, traditionally, what we had done is we collected photos throughout the year. We collected the uh, the measurables, um, the impressions, all of that stuff, and and then we built out a recap at the end of the season. And sometimes, uh, depending on the size of the partner, sometimes they'd take up to a week to build out one. Um, now, um, we are updating that information in track throughout the year as we go. And what it is in it, what it is enabled us to do 
in addition to the transparency that we're providing on a monthly basis is um, it has allowed us to go in at the end of the season. The framework is really pretty much built out and we need to fine tune some stuff. We need to move some stuff around, maybe edit some stuff. But overall, it's pretty much built out for us if you've been doing the work throughout the season. And instead of a week spent on that, you can knock it out in an afternoon. Um, and what that enables us to do is to have that renewal conversation. If we need to have a follow-up follow up renewal conversation after the season ends, we've got the recap that is a natural way to have that meeting set up rather than having a renewal conversation and then coming back with the recap because the recap takes too long or waiting to have that follow-up renewal conversation. It allows us to, um, to have that conversation earlier because we, we've already got this stuff built out. Fantastic. And Melody, if you don't mind sharing uh, the recap template that we've kind of put together for this show, um, Zach will kind of help illustrate how the pieces kind of come together. Maybe some of the things that we're working on as we start to collect some data along the way and just some of the process stuff that goes into this, Zach, if you don't mind. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think we need to watch the video right now, but this is just a, an intro sizzle reel, sizzle video that we had. Um, and then we go into introduction. We have a few slides of um, introduction just to talk about the different things in our organization. So we we obviously hit on um, on the history of the organization here, and then we hit on um, player performance on the ice. Um, if you move to the next slide, we talk about um, just kind of what we've got as far as um, as we're rebuilding the future, um, and we we highlight some of the young talent that we've got. And then if you go to the next slide, uh, we talk about, I'm going off of memory here, but I believe it's the, the yeah, digital reach. So um, we, we kind of hit an overall slide on just what our digital reach looks like um, from a Detroit Red Wings perspective. As we move along, we've got our social standings just so they've, they've got kind of reference on where we stand within the league. And then Red Wings Radio, we sell radio. Um, here we, we sell the radio packages. So we've got just uh, a really high level, all of these are just high level overviews of, of where we stand um, on, on these assets. And then we start to roll into um, kind of the, the partner assets. And this is a, a demo doc. So you're gonna see some pictures that aren't Red Wings related, but um, we've got, if you see here, we've got like a, a larger picture and then we've got a text box down at the bottom that explains what the asset is. In that um, text box, we can also include, in the first year that we've done this, um, we did recaps on this, we also included any um, metrics or any, uh, any details about the asset. Um, we included it there. As we move forward, we're, we're working on um, redeveloping that process and we're going to pull individual metric uh, boxes that um, will be viewable um, based on the category of the asset. So whether it's media um, or if it's arena signage, um, we'll have different metrics that we are, we're currently working on the categories and the details for that will pull into those slides. They'll only be visible um, to the, the partner if we've got, um, we've got a number in there or we've got information in that box if it's not visible if it's if there's no information in it then it won't be visible to the partner so they won't even know it's there um, and then we go through the assets so talk about the entitlement assets uh, we've got some photos and just some detail on each one obviously this is not at little Caesars arena um, we go into each of the different categories or the buckets um, so entitlements static signage um, and we just kind of roll through the partnership uh, just like this as we get to the end um, of the deck, uh, we usually do a summary slide um, that's a thank you. And then at the end of it, we provide um, a recommended enhancements. And some of those are enhancements that, um, that may be just added value where we see like we can add value. Some of them um, require an incremental spend. And that's where we talk about those, especially in a non-renewal year, we, um, we're looking for ways to to um, to grow the partnership. And so um, if it's a renewal year, we obviously are talking about renewing. If it's not, we're bringing some enhancements that 
will help us grow um, revenue, um, but also enhance the partnership. It's fantastic. So Zach, you kind of hit on some key points as far as how these are created, the efficiency. Um, how about how about partner reaction? Did you feel like you guys are able to provide them, you know, more visibility kind of throughout with these, you know, and with this being kind of the icing on the cake, because you know they're they're in the system and and getting updated in real time. Or tell us about kind of the dynamic of shifting from the onus is often PowerPoint for kind of creating these and the the roadblock that it kind of presents itself at the end of the season with you guys having conflicting seasons there. Um, take us into the dynamic of like the delivery, um, you know. Yeah, it is, it's it's helped immensely. And, and I mean, the biggest thing is just, again, I hate to keep saying it, but transparency. They're able to see at any given time, um, they're able to log in, our partners are able to log in. Maybe um, our day-to-day -day contact has to give a report to, to senior leadership and um, they need information right away. Well, they can go in and, and they can have access to that. They can um, decide which information they want to share with senior leadership versus which they don't. Um, and we're there to support that, um, obviously, as, a, as the activation managers, but it, it allows them to pull the information um, in a hurry when they need to. Um, it also allows them to see exactly what's going on with each asset. If something's not working, um, like let's address it now. And then on the flip side for us, it allows us to, to look and, and go to a partner and say, hey, I noticed you've got a skating party. Um, we've offered you seven dates for it and you've turned it down. Is this something that's still important to you? If it's not, like let's, let's look at something that can help you achieve what you're trying to achieve. Um, if, if it's not a value to you, um, it, there's no point in keeping in the deal. Let's let's find something that is of value to you. And so we're able to have those conversations throughout the year rather than just at the end of the year during the recap. No doubt. So Zach, you've highlighted um, a lot of strategies, but take folks into the world of the choke points, right? Why would why would someone, you know, um, that's kind of done things the traditional way or status quo way think? Um, why should I invest in a platform like Track? Like from an ROI perspective, ROO, or you know, any seed, I guess. If you're a manager looking to move your way up, if you're, you know, a VP or even a, a C level type or governor, or president, what's the impact that Track can you know, overall can you, know, you know or or granularly make, you know, as far as um, you know, impact? Yeah, I think it just streamlines everything. It streamlines the process. Um, it, it helps with the relationship um, with um, each individual partner. And because it streamlines the process, it reduces the amount of time you take to build stuff out. And you're able to spend more time um, really thinking about the partnership rather than executing the, the contracted assets. Of course, we want to execute contracted assets, but we really want to think about the partnerships more than just what is the contracted assets? How can we grow this? And it, it helps us with that. And it helps drive incremental value or incre incremental revenue because we're able to spend time on this stuff. Fantastic. What about the relationship side? Yeah, for the relationship side, um, it, it just it continues to build that trust um, with with the partners. I think the biggest thing for us, um, you know, especially during the pandemic, was being able to um, to really look at um, each individual partner and um, and communicate openly and honestly with. And, and I think they realized um, that, that we had their best interests at, at heart and we were really looking out for them. Um, and it continues to build that. When, when you're able to show in real time, like, hey, this is how this is performing. Um, you can see it with your own eyes. The partner can see it. This is how this is performing. We've got a better way to do this that we would like to recommend. Um, I think it just continues to build that relationship that we really are looking out for their best interests. Absolutely. So it's as mentioned, guys, it's all it's not all rainbows and unicorns out there. Um, Zach, what are some of the things that keep you up at night, keep you guys up at night? You know, it's like it's a it's a well fine oiled machine, right? A product of Detroit. But um, it's again, there's 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 always something, right? What's what's going on in your mind right now? Where we sit and and your peers? Yeah, I think right now it's um, 
you know, the biggest thing for, for us is, is like several teams, um, there are, is an opportunity to sell a jersey patch. And, uh, and there are a lot of teams that have that opportunity to sell it right now. And so the market is, is flooded and it's, um, it's working through um, finding a, a partner, not only finding a partner that's willing to, to purchase it, but finding the right partner for our brand, for their brand, and, um, and building out a plan for how to activate that. And so, um, as I mentioned, our solutions team is, is vital to our success. Um, as well as the sales and activation team, we really um, we really roll together. Um, but I think that's the the thing that's keeping me up at night right now is um, is finding the right partner for that. And talk about how activation plays into that kind of pitch process or ideation process. Yeah, so I mean, activation managers uh, really once the the sale is made, um, the the relationship kind of um, is owned by the activation manager. The sales managers are still there and, and present, but the day-to-day -day contact for the organization is the activation manager. And so the activation manager gets to know um, the partners best. They get to know um, their KPIs. Their KPIs change over time. They get to know that. Um, they, they have those relationships. They can tell you whether somebody's um, likely to be interested in an idea that we want to pitch them or not. They've got a pretty good educated guess on that. Um, and so they know what the partners are looking for and, and maybe some hot buttons that can help us um, deliver on what the partners is, is wanting to do and how we can incorporate that into a new proposal or a new pitch. Have you guys learned anything from the marketplace in terms of what works, what sticks, what renews, you know, along with these? Because it's sure it's a branding play, right? But Typically, these deals are super complex, right? It's a whole elaborate build out that's often 80, 100 different elements, if not more. Um, have you guys learned at all of, you know, what your peers have done that, that you think is translatable? Yeah, I think it's, it's you know, from, from my perspective, it's really customizing a package based on the partner. Um, and I think that we've got a great opportunity here because we've got not only the Red Wings, um, but we've got the District Detroit, which is um, a, an area that we're developing downtown Detroit um, that will be around the arena. Um, and, and we've got some opportunities to potentially incorporate some of that into the partnership. Um, so looking for the right partner, looking for a partner that um, not, not necessarily is just looking for a brand play, they may be, um, and, and that's great if they are, but really customizing um, the proposal to what they're telling us. We need to listen um, to what they're saying and um, and customize the proposal to meet their needs. Sure, and speaking of, I can't wait to, to check out Little Caesars Arena tomorrow. In fact, flying back to Michigan to see the Lightning. Spent a lot of time watching the Lightning take on the Red Wings, so that'll be a whole lot of fun. Can't wait to see the area in the district. Take us into the world of like some of these awesome community partnerships and more about kind of building out this new space and really, you know, helping with the key initiative that you guys learned, you know, through COVID of like really getting involved in the community and having it be more than lip service. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> one thing that's, that's really nice is we share kind of, we have a shared priority with our partners and that's um, to support the communities in which we live, work and play, um, whether it be um, downtown Detroit or, or Metro Detroit suburbs. And so um, obviously we, we have two professional sports teams, um, but we're so much more than that. And our, our, our goal, one of our goals, it's important to do our part um, to do uh, our work in the community. But one of our goals is to grow the, the games of hockey and baseball um, in Detroit. However, in addition to that, um, it's important to listen to our partners and create and implement uh, community programs that meet their goals as well. Um, so we we have a few of them. Uh, we did a uh, an esports lounge that we built out with Children's Foundation and uh, and Boys and Girls Club. Um, and while it's an esports lounge, one of the the main priorities for uh, the Children's Foundation is a focus on mental health. So we have days where um, where we don't do anything electronically over there. It's, it's really focused on um, mental health and, um, you know, tuning away from, from all the electronics. We've got uh, 
a Meyer holiday shopping spree that we do where we bring um, kids down and and uh, treat them to a night. We just did it last week. We've got some players out there skating. We've got, um, you know, different crafts. We've got uh, a dinner for them. Uh, this year we did it um, over at Little, at Little Caesars Arena and, and they got to skate and then they went over to the ballpark and got to do some um, activities over at the ballpark. Uh, so it, it really just depends on, on what the partner is doing. Obviously, it's great if we can intertwine um, develop, growing the game, growing the sport. Um, and we've got several partners that do that, but we've also got partners that um, really focus on the arts or um, different community initiatives, education. Um, and, and we work with our community relations team, our community impact team, we call them, to develop, um, to de develop programs that, that mutually meet our needs. How saturated is it though, Zach? It seems like these are pretty popular assets. Yeah, um, it, you know, it is. Um, we, have, uh, we have a lot of partners that want a community event. Um, and so we're constantly going to our community team and saying, what else do you have? Like, what, what else can we do? How can we incorporate this? Um, we've got a, a um, like a learn to skate program with, with Valley Sports. We've got a youth hockey program uh, with Meyer, where they get um, for for a reduced fee, they get all of the equipment that's needed to play hockey, and then they get lessons. Um, we have open skates, um, just a lot of different opportunities depending on what the partner is looking to accomplish. We also did um, some neighborhood tours on the Tiger side, where we uh, we went into Detroit neighborhoods and we celebrated uh, the home opener and opening week and brought pizza and paused the mascot from the Tigers and just threw a big block party. Um, so it just depends on what the partner is looking to do, and what they're, what they're looking to accomplish. And then we try and, we try and come up with a program that, that um, works for us and works for them. Fantastic. And speaking of the ecosystem around Little Caesars Arena, the Pistons are a tenant in your building. Let's talk about operationally how you work with the Pistons and some of the challenges and I guess solutions involved in doing so. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit different because um, they are a tenant and, um, and they're not um, a part of our, of our village owned family. Um, that being said, uh, we work with them um, a lot. I have a counterpart on the, the Pistons that I work with um, constantly. Um, we have, uh, we have a bi-weekly meeting. Our, our senior leadership has a bi-weekly meeting with the Pistons to talk about anything upcoming. Um, we try and strategize on, on partnerships that we can do together. Um, we, because we, um, we own the arena, we have the ability to sell all the um, permanent signage areas. Um, and so we're able to do that, but we're constantly collaborating. Um, our ops teams collaborate with the Pistons ops teams on days where the building is dark, um, if we need load in, load out, if they need the basketball court down for something or we need uh, to host a skating party, we're able to do that. We, it's just constant communication with the business. Fantastic. Well, this has been amazing. Um, I know we're kind of running up on time a little bit, but a couple um, key points to highlight. Guys, if this is interesting to you and you want to set up some time, you can set up a demo at track.io, trak.io spend some face time with me to talk about specifics for your org. Um, and then further, I got a little challenge based on some of Zach's feedback. You know, it's a hard time for everybody right now, economically, mental health wise, you know, there's a lot of issues that we just don't even understand or haven't really fully dealt with in the past. I'm just encouraging everybody this holiday season to kind of give back a little bit. Um, random acts of kindness, what can you do in your community to make someone feel a little more special because you know we're all feeling it i think um and this can certainly help us kind of get out of it so that's my challenge to you all um i do want to go ahead and open up the floor for any questions that you might have um please jump in via audio or shoot them through the chat I'd love to hear if anyone's kind of wondering about anything we've gone over or otherwise um now's your chance and and while we're waiting, Zach, any lasting thoughts, I guess? I mean, you've done such a good job just spelling things out for folks in terms of 
how you guys operate and certainly some of the challenges and solutions involved. But um, any lasting thoughts for the group? Yeah, I think, you know, the thing that I've appreciated most um, <clears throat> about our relationship is that just like we um, had to had to become flexible, I think that you guys are, are constantly evolving. And um, when we bring you an idea of something that we really need to, to see um, implemented, um, you guys have done that. Uh, as you mentioned, we, we did not renew a few years ago, and um, there were some pain points there, and we shared those with you. And uh, when you came back uh, to talk to us uh, last year, um, you had addressed all of our pain points. Um, and, um, and I'm excited about the platform. And, and as we find something uh, that isn't, um, isn't working the way we need it to, um, we reach out to you and, and uh, Mark and your team is, is able to, to hop right in and address it. So um, what the platform looks like today for the Detroit Red Wings and Detroit Tigers, I have no doubt it will look different nine months from now. And then it will look different another six months after that. Um, but um, it's constantly evolving to, to, to make us better. And so that's what I appreciate. Oh, that, that means a lot. Um, we had a question come through, Zach. What do you think is the, the most effective part of using Track's digital sponsorship management platform? I just think the most effective part is that it's, it's all in one place. Everything is, is right there for you to, to view. Um, I think that the creative is huge to have the creative submitted there. Um, so often, um, previously, we would get LED rings in one email, and then we'd get um, IPTV and video clusters in another email and a program ad in another email. And it's hard to keep track of all of that. Um, no pun intended. Now it's all, um, it's all centralized in one location. You can go in, you can see the asset that we're talking about and you can see the creative that's associated with that asset. Um, so I think that that is the, uh, the best piece for me. That's, that's fantastic. And I would just add to rolling in the holiday season guys, uh, a lot of people need to take some time off, take some vacations. Cool thing about track is that you can redirect notifications, send them to a teammate who might be, you know, on call for things and not worry while the work goes on, right? Work goes on, people get in the loop about what happened and you get to pick it up when you're ready, when you're back fresh after the holidays or what have you. So um, any other questions? Well, anyway, wanted to thank you all. This has been a pleasure to highlight Zach as a true star uh, in the track system and otherwise, as well as his team. He's got a fantastic team behind him that are doing a lot of work here to kind of make the difference for partners and the organization and the product on ice, on field, et cetera. So happy holidays, everybody. I'll turn it back to you, NSF. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, thank you guys both for that fantastic discussion and uh, as well as everybody who joined our webinar today, we greatly appreciate your time. Uh, we hope that there were some great insights that you guys can take back to your organization. And as a reminder, if you enjoyed the content of this session today, we'd love to have you join us at the National Sports Forum on February 26th through the 28th out in Los Angeles, California. Um, our last note here from the NSF side, if you or your organization has had any great ideas or advertising campaigns that you executed this year, we've extended our NSF SAMI and Achievement Award submission deadline until December 30th. So feel free to get your submissions in before the end of the year. And with that being said, everybody have a safe and happy holidays, and we hope to see you in February.